This is the Mile-C TP2 Plus thermal camera for iPhone and Android. The small form factor and wireless connection to your smartphone make this camera ideal for getting into small spaces. It offers a wide temperature range, dual thermal and visible light cameras, and a generous two-hour runtime. In this review, we'll look at the build quality, the user interface, and then look at how this camera actually works in a real-world application, in this case, 3D resin printing. Whilst there are heaps of applications for this camera, 3D resin printing is something that I do a lot of, and in that application, temperature really does matter. There's a lot to cover, so check out the chapter markers in the description if you want to skip ahead. And a word of disclosure, Marcy sent me this device after my review of their D9 Pro laser distance meter, and I mentioned to Marcy that this camera would be great for reading temperatures in 3D resin printing applications, so they asked me to do a review. No money exchanged hands, I'm not being paid for this review, but I do get to keep the device, which is great, and you'll see why very shortly. The camera comes in very simple packaging. It's nicely boxed, and once again, there is a very well-made case that goes with the TP2+. You also get the usual paperwork, including a quick start guide, a manual, and charging cable, which is USB-A to USB-C. Something that you're probably wondering about straight away is the quality of the wireless connection and whether there are any lag issues. Well, firstly, connecting the device to your phone is a simple process of downloading the relevant app and then following the prompts to find your device and set up the connection. In my case, I was prompted to do a firmware update. And again, this was a simple process of following all the prompts and allowing the update to complete. I found this process to be very straightforward. Just be mindful that the name of the app is different for iPhone and Android. Make sure you're looking for the right one, and you can just scan the QR code on the back to find out more information about that. Once connected, you can see here that the camera responds very quickly to me placing my hand in front of it and then moving my fingers around. When I first used the camera, I was surprised at how quick this was and how the camera immediately picked up that my fingers were so cold. Every now and again, the screen does appear to refresh, which causes a slight delay, but I'd have to say that lag is, well, it's definitely not an issue with the TP2+. Plus. The build quality feels solid. The size is just right to fit into your hand and the soft touch plastic feels nice to handle. The clamp on the base expands out to fit your smartphone. And you can see here that I can even use the TP2 Plus with my quad lock iPhone case, which is quite thick. There's also a quarter inch tripod mount and you'll see that used extensively in this video. And look, despite being a handheld device, the tripod mount is very useful. I'd have to say that everything about this camera makes it feel like a quality product. So let's jump straight into the user interface and see how this works. I've got the TP2 Plus mounted on a tripod, and I'm gonna use this cup of hot water to show you how this camera works. What you see here on the right is the app, and it's currently showing a live feed from the camera using the visible mode. Jumping straight into the IR mode, you can see that the camera instantly starts measuring temperatures. We'll work through these icons, starting with calibration. Here I can set my distance units, and then temperature units, and then use those units to set some basic calibration. You'll notice that I had a thermometer on the bench telling me that the atmospheric temperature is 18.5 degrees Celsius. I'll use this to set the atmospheric temperature down to 18 for the camera. Then I'll set my target distance. In this example, I've got this set to 500 millimeters or 0.5 meters. Tapping this icon allows me to toggle the display of the center, maximum and minimum temperature point settings. You can see the white center marker here and the red and green maximum and minimum markers floating around measuring the temperature. This can be useful if you want to focus only on a particular temperature or if you need to turn them off because things are getting a bit busy on the screen. And you'll see that in the resin printing demonstration. This icon is for the isotherm function. This allows you to isolate a temperature range and only display data for that range. And this can be very useful. I'll change the current range by adjusting the low temperature and then tap setting to turn it on. Then going back to the main display, you can see that there are no results for that range of 70 to 100 degrees. Moving on to image mode switching, we've seen the visible mode already, which could also be very useful to use simply as an inspection camera for hard to get at places. Then there is picture in picture, which lets you see the infrared over the visible view. And then possibly the most useful is fuse mode, which lets you see the entire infrared image fused or blended with the entire visible mode. Notice that up the top here, I can use the slider to vary the amount. Lowering the amount gives more infrared and increasing the amount gives more of the visible mode. I found that somewhere around halfway works quite well. You can also change the color palette of your screen, including red, gray, white, hot, and black, hot. 
I'm going to leave mine set to Iron. Now let's take a look at these icons across the top. The Point icon allows me to specify points on the display to get a reading at that point. And I can then use the Delete icon to remove those points. With the Line icon, I can draw a line across the display to measure across that line. And the Region icon allows me to draw a rectangular shape over the area of interest to get maximum, minimum and average readings for that area. And for my application in 3D resin printing, that is very, very useful. And you can also draw multiple objects on your display. I'll go ahead and add another region in this colder area to the left. And you can see those measurements shown for each region. The shutter icon is used to activate a non-uniformity correction, presumably in the image, but I found that I had no need for that. Another feature found under the settings icon is the temperature alarm. Now, my image is currently hovering between about 18 and 44 degrees. So let's set an alarm for when the temperature goes above 40 degrees. And then we'll take a snapshot every five seconds for a total of five snapshots. Tap setting and then go back to the main screen. And you can see it's set off the alarm straight away and it's already taking snapshots. I can then go to the camera reel in the app and find those snapshots. They can then of course be shared in the usual way from your smartphone. It's also worth pointing out here that this button is used for recording both still images and video of your temperature recordings. Under the settings icon, we also find options to set the measurement range and things like auto power off, battery capacity and factory reset. But what does all that look like in a real world test? Is this thing actually useful? Well, yes. Right now it's cold where I am in Australia and 3D resin printing in cold conditions causes all kinds of problems. In fact, it's only 15 degrees in here right now. One thing I've always wanted to know is how effectively I've been heating my resin. Now, I've been using these small thermometers to give me some idea and that kind of works. And I could use a probe, but that just isn't practical because I don't want to stick that into a vat full of resin. This is my Anycubic D2 DLP printer running a print. You can see that it's quite cool in the workshop on the day that I recorded this at around about 16 degrees. The recommended temperature for resin printing is usually above 20 degrees and anything colder and you start getting adhesion and layer separation issues. The chamber heater you can see here is set to 35 degrees to allow for the cooling effect of the ambient temperature. Now the ambient temperature shown by the TP2 Plus is a bit higher than the thermometer, but you'll see those two coming closer together as this test progresses. Now one of the problems often talked about with chamber heaters is that they mostly heat the top of the printer because, well, heat rises. But you can clearly see here that the heat is concentrated towards the vat where the printing is actually happening. And not only that, there is a hot spot towards the left side of the vat, which is where the heater is pointed at. So not only is most of the heat where it needs to be, and that's good, but the heat is also not evenly distributed, and that's, well, not so good. So let's take the cover off and see how things change. As you'd expect, temperatures start falling, but not as quickly as you might expect. The chamber heater shows the temperature falling quickly, but the TP2 Plus is showing that the temperature remains much more stable than you might think in the area of the vat. And this tells you that you can take the cover off the printer to check something or make an adjustment without affecting the temperature too much. Of course, you wanna keep the lid off for as short a time as possible, but you can do it. Now, let's focus on the vat. I'll delete the region around the vat and create two smaller regions to see how the average varies within the vat. With the cover on, you can see that the TP2 Plus clearly shows a difference between the two regions. The average differs by about four degrees. Then with the cover off, you can see that the temperatures are higher because you're measuring the actual vat and not through the cover, but the difference is consistent at about four degrees. So what does all this tell me and why is the TP2 Plus useful and why would I want this? Well, it does confirm for me that the chamber heater concept works, and it actually works really well. Sure, it heats the top of the cover, but the heat is actually mostly concentrated where it needs to be, and that's very important. It also tells me that I can take the printer cover off the printer during a print without causing a rapid fall in temperature that might affect the print. I've got a minute or two, and again, that's very helpful. Another finding from this test is that to get a desired average temperature around the vat and in the resin, I need to set the chamber heater to about eight to 10 degrees more than what I want the average resin temperature to be. Well, at least that was the case in this particular example. So am I better informed with the TP2 Plus? Well, yes, absolutely. And I'm really glad that I know more about how the chamber heater is working when it's in the printer. 
Now, you might not be into 3D resin printing, but hopefully from this example, you can see how features like regions, points, visible mode, fuse mode, and IR mode can really help you understand how heat is affecting, well, whatever it is you're doing. And of course, you might have use for the other features that we talked about earlier. So should you buy the TP2 Plus? Well, if you're looking for a small, lightweight thermal camera that integrates with your smartphone, or if you need something that you can use in small spaces, or something that you can use as an inspection camera, or well, then yes, I think you'll get a lot of value out of the TP2 Plus. Marcy do make other thermal cameras for different applications, and if a mobile version doesn't suit you, then I'd encourage you to check out their other models, and you can find out more about that on their website. But I've actually found that the mobile integration works really, really well. Better than I expected. There are links in the description if you'd like to find out more or if you're interested in making a purchase. I'd like to thank Marcy for the chance to review the TP2 Plus. This is certainly something that I will use regularly when setting up prints in the colder months. And you know what? It's probably also going to be really useful in the hotter months too, because it gets very hot here. And it might be useful to know when it's too hot. There's been a lot to get through in this review, and if you got value out of that, then please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.